What's up? It's your boy Rampage Jackson. I'm here with the best co-host, Bear DeGidio. We're here. We got another amazing guest, but Rampage, before we go into this guest, we are having the biggest sale of the year, jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide, the best-selling chain stacks, our best-selling iced out chains, sweat proof, custom class, durable, made to be worn every day, and styles for everybody from bracelets to chains. Make sure you guys go check out jackson.com up to 50% off site-wide right now. And don't forget, if you're looking for all the limited edition clothing, you can go to jacksonclub.com. You can use promo code YT15 for 15% off. And you can catch the shorts that we've been training in, the jackets, the eyewear, everything that the guests have been wearing. We appreciate everybody's support. Before we jump right into this podcast with this amazing guest, we just want to say thank you for everything you guys have been doing. Leave comments and make sure you guys tag us on Instagram if you've been picking up some pieces. Hey, we live right now. We finna jump on, on in. We finna jump on in. We got Busesha here with Bear. We got who? Busesha. How do you I, say it? Busesha. See, I said it right. Busesha. <laughs> I said it right. Hey, for real though, uh, I don't mean to just you know jump right in and talk about drama, but we heard you know a little bit about that drama between um, Gordon Ramsay <laughs> and uh, Nikki Nikki Rod. Yeah, I, I be honest, I don't even know. I know they were like teammates and they were like good friends and then they split. But being honest, I don't really know the reason. So. Yeah, you ain't you ain't involved in all that bullshit. You don't uh, care no, about that no, little no, shit. Too much problem. I got I got my own problems too, <laughs> to try to deal with like some yeah. people's problems, you know. So yeah. I know they have a lot of beef in the internet and talking back and forth, but you don't care about that shit. Nah, nah, Do, nah. Are they in your weight class, both of them, huh? Yeah, I have a weight. I, I fought Gordon one time, but I never fought Nikki. Oh, okay. So. Do you, do you ever see yourself rematching Gordon? Yeah, we were talking about that. Like, that's one fight that I think would, like, make sense for me to do it. But being honest right now, I'm focused on MMA. So, make no reason for me to stop training, to, like, go back. I think to be more for my ego, you know, because I lost the fight, was kind of like a close fight, and to, so, like, it's not really my plans right now, because MMA is so hard, so, so much to train, and if I want to, like, fight in him, of course, I want to, to give my best, I want to go there 100%, so f to do that, I have, like, to focus at least, like, three, four months in training camp, probably it's going to be, like, somewhere else not just the whole time in florida where i train so i don't know if it's like this commitment it's worth not talking about money but you know, about my plans i want i want to do good because i did something great in jiu-jitsu so i want to do something good in mma too you know mm -hmm. so if if i try to like to do that it would be like a step back in my plans so i think it's not worth that's understandable though but it's not about the money isn't it no, it never was because jiu-jitsu, there was no money back in the day. And I did like so, so long. Like I started competing as black belt when I was 20. And I stopped like when I was 29. Of course, I got like good money, but not compared to what I can make with MMA. But I got 13 world titles. Like I got my name in the Guinness Book, like with the biggest, uh, with the most winners of world titles as black belt. So... I feel like a mission accomplishment. And yeah. So I don't feel like there is something else to do in jiu-jitsu. But, so that is a new challenge, MMA. So I don't feel like going to the gym, train again, jiu-jitsu, same thing over and over. But MMA, every day is like, okay, I'm gonna try to do this. So I feel like a new beginning. So mm -hmm. that's why I want to focus just on MMA. Are you, are you enjoying MMA more than jiu-jitsu now? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I, I, I have only, Five fights, I got four victories and one uh, loss. The last one was the only time that I fought three rounds. Mm. So it's a lot to to learn. So it was a good experience to fight three rounds because the other four fights, I finished like first first uh, round. You submitted them first? Yeah. Round. <laughs> so I didn't really have the experience to yeah. fight, to sit in the corner, to, to hear the like, okay, do that, do that, to feel like... so. The last one was the first time, and I lost. So, like, okay, I'm going to get back there. I don't want to beat this guy. I want the rematch right away. You know what I mean? How so, did you lose? Decision? Yeah, decision. 
first round, I did like a bad shot, and I talk like I, I got like a really bad ground and pound. Some punches in the back of the head too. So when I gr- when I stood up, I had like a concussion, very first round. But I never had a concussion before, so I didn't really know what was going on. I felt like fighting drunk. Yeah. So like, but I I didn't. Oh, okay, I got a concussion. So I was just feeling weird, but I couldn't think straight. But I did the three rounds. Mm. I remember everything. It was like a tough fight. I still like took him down. He escaped. I took him down again. But was hard to like. If I didn't have the concussion, it would be easier to like think and think about yeah. the jujitsu, the techniques. But was good. But was a good experience. Of course, I, I, I that wasn't my plan to lose. But it was like a good experience for my career. So I want to go there again and test it out. Mm, that's the good. first four rounds, I didn't get punched in the face. So this one was like a war. So yeah, that's good. You learn. You learn yeah. something though. That's that's what that's all that matters. Because in the MMA. It's going to be very rare that someone stays undefeated their whole yeah. career. Like John Jones is the only one that I that I know of. Yeah. Uh, well, then Hickson, then Hickson, the one Hickson, did he go undefeated? I, I, I think so. Oh, Khabib. Yeah, Khabib, Khabib too. retired yeah, yeah, Khabib. undefeated. Yeah, he, retired he, undefeated. He, he retired too early. Though. Early, yeah. yeah. He didn't give himself enough wars. I don't yeah. think he fought enough top top talent, but John, he's still one of John the Jones got a lot of like tough fights yeah. and a lot of title defense, right? Yeah. In terms of that fight, though, Rug Rug, that's who he fought. This guy is a monster on the internet. He's, like, squeezing watermelons and popping them with his arms and his strength, <laughs> and he's, like, doing this crazy wrestling yeah. in the sand. They asked me to do that, I said, no. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. I, I'm not going to. I squeeze people's neck, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna be squeezing watermelons, the guy all dirty in the middle of the hotel. So I said, no. So they asked him, he did, you know, in the, in the law. He's so big. So, like, what was his strength like? Because we've seen on Instagram, he looks powerful. He looks big, but actually we are same height and same weight. Mm. So, but he's like, like, f- looks bigger, you know, but yeah. we're like same height and same weight. And what was his strength and power like? Being honest, wasn't like, wasn't like uh, anything crazy, you know, because like, uh, he was like really slippery. He did like a lot of faults. Even he got like yellow card because he did like some uh, some a lot of penalties. Uh, even like the one that I was uh, about the back of the head, Herb Dean like warning him, even holding his hand. But if I kept going, he soccer kicked me like Pride style in that MMA. Was crazy. In yeah. MMA, not allowed. No. In one in one is allowed ground knee, but not soccer kick. So you guys was in were you was in Asia in this fight? Yeah, was like. But they, but they can't do the soccer kick. Did there? you see the soccer no. kick? It no, I didn't full, see that full one. Full blown soccer kick. Yeah, but like you know what I mean. So like you're fighting, but it was a little bit weird. Some faults that he did, and he didn't get like. Punish for you know what yeah. I mean. Yeah, he didn't get no points taken away or nothing. I mean, he got a yellow card, but in one championship, when you get a yellow card, just take ten percent off your purse. <laughs> yeah, that's what they used to do in Pride. Yeah, but you should take <laughs> points too, though. Yeah, of course, because <laughs> like, if you go like a tough decision and you get the card, right? In the, I think it would be more fair. So just yeah. to take money off your purse, I think makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right? You ever been soccer kicked? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. By right. Van, by he soccer kicked it. Yeah, Vanley soccer kicked me. I think Ninja probably soccer kicked me too. It hurt. Oh, yeah. No, I didn't feel it. Hell no. This Why? Shit, this shit How hurt. come every time you say that when you get hurt, like it or when you get hit, it doesn't hurt you? It don't hurt. You your adrenaline going. It don't. It don't hurt. Same with yeah, you. That, yeah, that that was surprised because I was uh, was expecting a lot of pain, but you fell later. I felt yeah. like uh, really the yeah. headache. The after the fight was something that crazy, <laughs> crazy, yeah. But in the fight, I was getting punched and I was getting mad, you know. And so yeah. at some point, I wasn't trying to win the fight. I was trying like to kill the guy. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. But it was was good. I didn't go through the emotion before, so it was good. Like because we were like fighting, and I kind of like got too emotional and get out of the strategy. Yeah. So it never happened with me before. So Yeah, I think um Bear before he gets like a little bit too old, I think he we should get him a fight. Just like just so he just I so just he could be one. one of us. Just so he can have one fight. We just fight here in in the gym. All right. And we only invite like whoever he wants yeah. is his thing. Like it's like a little small invite. But you know, you know, invite only. We yeah. just get you a fight. We I need one. 
Just one. Here's the one thing that I can't, and I think a lot of people can't. I, I mean, I've been in a few street fights, but like school fights and like nothing too crazy at a bar, pushing, shoving, couple yeah. hits. Never really been hit. Talk a lot of crap though, but I've always stand behind him. <laughs> but like you see me in the gym, I always talk loud to everybody. But I, I just I can't comprehend the the pressure of like sleeping the night before, working a week before. Like yeah. I can't comprehend that that build up. I don't know if I could. I don't know. That seems like a crazy thing. Like you know you're going to war, right? Yeah. Yeah, but I think that's a way for you you to know yourself better. Oh, because, really? Yeah, because you do, you like you said, you never go through that, right? So it would be a good experience for you to ho know how you go. Because the fight itself, it's okay. You go there, but like you said before, to get prepared, yeah. to sleep, in the, that's a whole... You lose yeah. sleep before a fight? I sleep, yeah. I get really nervous in the fight day. Oh, but, really? Yeah, but in the, 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 before, I'm, because I fought like jiu-jitsu, I tried to get the same mindset that I had when I was competing for jiu-jitsu. So I tried to keep like the same mindset. But in the... But being honest, for MMA, I get ne less nervous than jiu-jitsu. But jiu-jitsu, you're not getting hit. Yeah, but I think it was too much pressure because like for uh. years, I was like the number one. So every time like people like, oh, who's going to beat Bushesha this year? Who's going to beat... You know what I mean? So I feel like kind of like a big target in my back the whole career so every time i win a tournament was like like you know like tons of weight out of my shoulder yeah. so when mma of course i can get hit it's a it's i'm under pressure but it's not my sport I, I'm, I'm brand new in this sport so i feel that 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 not way less pressure of course i can get hurt so i'm nervous about that but Pressure without the pressure makes everything like a little bit more yeah. relaxed somewhat, somehow. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. And for me, uh, with with sleeping and stuff, it's all always depended on like like especially in the earlier of my career and who who I was fighting. Like if I was fighting somebody that that could like potentially hurt me, I think I was, I was getting like some fighters could hurt you like basically like knock you out or something like that's yeah. why I call it hurt. Like some fighters like say I fought Chuck, I was fighting Chuck Liddell, I got nervous. Two weeks prior to the Chuck Liddell fight, I had dreams, nightmares. Two weeks to fight. Really? Yeah, and I had already of fought. What? Huh? Of what? Because uh, I'm a firm believer, like, because me and Chuck had fought once before, so I'm a firm believer, like, when you fight somebody and you beat them, they're going to train 10 times yeah. harder to come back and get that loss back. So I was super worried about, like, about Chuck Liddell. And so I remember having, like, I was in Big Bear training, and I was having, like, nightmares and dreams two weeks before and I got nervous I, it's never happened to me before I got nervous two weeks before I fought Chuck and I normally didn't get nervous until like the weigh-ins when damn. I see the guy damn yeah. but I mean like are you sleeping there nervous like thinking that Chuck's gonna just knock you out in the ring is that I, it well like I, well it, it wasn't that I was afraid to get knocked out but I was like it could it, it was a strong possibility but I didn't I didn't want to like let my coaches down. I was nervous to like let my teammates down and the pressure yeah. and the pressure. Yeah, the pressure like the of my dad is there. You know, oh. getting knocked out in front of my dad. So that was always a that was always a worry because Chuck was a, a very da dangerous guy. He he had knockout power. A lot of people I fought, I wasn't worried if they were, if they was going to knock me out. Like say for instance when I fought uh, Kevin Randleman, um, you know, R.I.P. I was really nervous about him wrestling me and taking me down and and ground and pounding me in pride. He can do like the stumps and and the knees and stuff. So I I wrestled really hard. And I trained really hard for him, and he could he could barely even take me down. So most of the times when I was really nervous or really, really worried about my opponents, that's that that made me prepare even more for them. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the same when like. I think fear is the best motivator, right? Yeah, so yeah. when you don't want something to happen. It's when you train harder, but I think, but somehow it helps you, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what, what's the training like right now? What, what MMA gym are you like currently at in Florida? Yeah. I'm, I, I, I live here for 10 years in California Yeah. because like checkmate HQ, Leo Vieira, who is my coach, my, my master, he has a gym here in Long Beach. So that's why I moved to California. You train here in Long Beach now? No, no. I live uh, for 10 years. Oh, okay. okay. So Sorry. then when I saw MMA during COVID, no competition was going on and i had this with my i always had okay a real fighter not a lot of people get this wrong but in my head like a real fighter i need to i'm a gi fighter so i learned i learned fighting the gi so i took my gi off fought uh, no gi 
So I end up winning two ADCC. So okay, cool. But and now I have to test my jiu-jitsu in a real fight, like MMA. So I decide, okay, even if I'm not like become an MMA fighter, I need to test myself in MMA. So then that's when I decided, okay, no competition jiu-jitsu going on. So I'm gonna start training. Then I remember, okay, I wanna fight. Then I went for uh, San Jose. Was during DC's last camp against Miocic, the mm -hmm. third fight. And I went there just to be in the camp a little bit. I didn't train with DC, the MMA, of course, but Jiu Jitsu, of course, I, I trained with him a little bit. And, and then I started training, I started hitting pads, I started training wrestling with the guys. So that's when I started. And then I went to all the gyms to test it out and ended up liking the ATT mm. in Florida. That's where I train right now because it was so hard to find heavyweights. I think for you it was too, right? To yeah. find like big guys, big bodies to train. Yeah. So I went there one Monday, I show up, 10 heavyweights training. I said, oh my God, this is, like, this is the place to be. So then I moved and I'm still, I'm still there. Like it's been three years, over three years a little bit. Bear, we gotta go out there one day and, and jump in the gym with them. 100%, oh, yeah. you need to go get ready for Shannon Briggs. Yeah, we yeah. want your head on a platter. Yeah, we, let's, let's, let's go spy on Shannon Briggs, but stop by there. Oh my God, yeah, he's in Florida. You ever seen him there? Oh, no. Where, oh, he's where, where, let's go, box. champ. The big, the, he's a big, ugly black guy with a- No, no, I know. I, oh, I, you know. I, I watch the, the, oh, the oh, podcast. You know him, yeah. But I mean, where's the gym? <laughs> I don't know where his gym. He's in Florida. That's why I know. No, I think he trains at the back of the, the Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like Kimo, Kimo style. Back yeah, in the day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We want to come, we're going to come excited. visit and uh, check out ATAT. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The guys, yeah, the guys, we love to have you there. A lot of legends go there. Yeah. Bob, Bobby Sapi was there. Was he? Yeah, a couple like weeks ago. Then Minotauro goes there all the time. Bob Sapi there a couple weeks ago? Yeah. He didn't even tell me he was in the States, man. That's What's your up? Guy. Hey, yeah. man, Did like, you see him and Bob Sapp fight in the Philippines? It, 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 Philippines was... No, we was, we was in Thailand. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did the, the double, the two-headed uh, boxing. What, what year was that? This was this was like this year. Oh, this year? No, yeah. I didn't yeah, see Yeah, I was, I was fat as fuck, though. Oh, really? So that's why I don't want to... Yeah, we, we ain't going to roll the clip, but nah, it's the funniest nah. thing I've ever seen in my life. I did. Him and Bob Sapp beating people up. It was fun. It was a fun. They put a big T-shirt on me and Bob Sapp. And he used his left arm, and I used my right arm. <laughs> we beat up two dudes. Oh, like oh my and like, god! Like, I want to see like that two headed, two headed box. It was it was the funnest thing I ever did in the ring. Oh really? Yeah, I wanna I wanna watch it there. Yeah. So, so as someone who's so decorated, like in jujitsu, and obviously in the gi, right? Yeah. And when you take the gi off, then you still were you know a champion. How are how are you like applying that training to MMA? Because MMA, you have to worry about kicking, you have to worry about elbows, you have to worry about throwing hands. I feel like there's so much more to it than you're used to training is that has oh, it been yeah. throwing you off yeah no for sure it's a lot of things to train but in the end of the day i'm not gonna train like i'm not gonna change like 20 years of of jiu-jitsu experience over like three years of striking of course i train a lot i train every day because i want to feel like comfortable at at, at least but in the in the end of the day if i have the opportunity i want to grab my opponent and use my jiu-jitsu, you know, but so it's been, I try to do every day like grappling and striking. Every day? Yeah. Like, yeah, of course. But is it hard dealing with different coaches, like a wrestling coach, a, a striking coach, a kicking coach? Not really, because uh, all the trains are there. So all the, the coaches know each other in every sparring session, all the coaches are watching. Oh, wow. So it's good because they are in the same page. Mm -hmm. It's not like when you train here, like, okay, you train pads with this guy, he, you do like 10 rounds, and then you leave here, go to the conditioning. Okay, the guy wants to kill you there too. So like, everybody wants to kill you. So when the coaches don't talk uh, with each other, I think it's hard. There is good because they all see, okay, today he was bad in the spine, he was tired, so I'm not gonna try to kill him. You know what I mean? So I feel that's the good part of to do everything in one place. Mm. And I didn't have this in California. So I was training, striking here, like jujitsu with Leo. Wrestling, I was like, one guy was coming from Temecula to help him, like, because the only big guy that I found. So it was hard. Yeah, man, I agree with this. When it's so spaced out like that, man, yeah. it's, it gets it gets old. You get tired of going yeah. on these I different... I see it now. I see you training for Shannon now. You're driving all over the place. And yeah. you spend a lot of time in traffic, huh? Yeah, yeah, that sucks. So, who was your favorite training partner? 
my favorite training partner throughout the years, man, I had I had some I had some real good ones, but but um lately it's it's this um kid named Kalani. He's uh from Hawaii. He's a um he's a he's a really good Really good sparring partner. Really? Yeah, yeah. Striking, wrestling, everything? Yeah, well, he's not too much of a wrestler, but I like striking that much, right? Yeah. He knows a little bit of wrestling, but he, he's 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 good. I think his first name is Anthony or something, but we always call him Kalani. Why? Because that's his last name. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you getting ready differently from your MMA fights for Shannon Briggs? Oh, I'm just doing a lot of boxing with um, um, Bobby the Coach, and in a couple of weeks when... Um, when uh, I step up my cardio and everything, I'm start sparring. Oh wow! Yeah, I, I, sparring is my favorite. Yeah, but I, me, I, I do different. I, I don't never, I don't never um, get like big ego maniacs and spar with them. I never spar with like a big top name professional athletes my whole career. Really? No, I, I, I Tito was the one. Tito Rico Rodriguez. When I first started out, I was sparring with them. But once once I got my name up there a little bit more, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't spar with yeah. like the top UFC fighters or no, I, I would I stay away from them because you get hurt doing it. What, what was like training uh, sparring with Tito Ortiz? Man, it was crazy to say. Okay, when I first started sparring with training with them, I didn't know anything, right? Because I started training with Tito right after my Sakuraba fight. Oh yeah, and I didn't know I didn't have any stand up. And Tito and Rico Rodriguez used to kick. They used to take turns kicking my ass. Oh really? Yeah, with stand up, they used to take turns kicking my ass, but 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 they were I, good. They was good, and I had never trained stand up right. And then after their fights, they would take time off. But me, after my fight, I would take like a week off. But I'd be back in the gym training. So then I go back and train with the coach. It'd just be me and him. Where's your sparring partner? I didn't have nobody. I was just getting better. So you were, yeah. you would train them, and then they wouldn't come back and they wouldn't you. come back and train oh, me for my fights. Tito. It's okay. It's all good. Then I got better. Then, then when I started training for the fights, my stand up got better. And they tried and they was trying to fuck me up, and I start fucking them up. Oh, that oh they would so get. Good. Oh yeah. Then, then you ever I get, got. You ever get dropped in the gym? I never. I, I've I've never been dropped in the gym. Not with a body shot. Not knocked out in the gym. Never. Never. That's nice. That's different, huh? Uh, yeah. That's. But that's that's something that everybody after the fight. Oh, I remember the one one thing that did happen to me though. <laughs> One thing that did happen to me, Rico, it was in Big Bear. I never, I didn't get dropped, but this is what happened. Rico Rodriguez, you know who he is, right? Yeah, the course. former heavyweight champion. He just hurt Tito in Big Bear, and they it was taking Tito out to go get worked on. Then he whispers to me. He was like, let's go light. And we were just boxing. I'm like, okay, let's go light. He had just hurt Tito. I'm like, okay. I get in the ring, and Rico do this crazy combo. I'm a 205 at this time, and I'm walking around probably like, uh, 215, and I fight a 205. And he do this. He's a big heavyweight, big heavyweight. And he got to do this combo, boom, boom, boom. And we just supposed to be in boxing. He throws a knee, and and his knee hits me in 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 the stomach. Now we didn't have no cameras or nothing. I don't think nobody filmed this. Next thing you know, I flew in between the ring and the garage door in Big Bear. He knocked the wind out of me. He he kneed me in the stomach, and I flew. I didn't get dropped or nothing like that. I flew. Off, out of the ring, in between the ring and the garage. And then I'm standing, I'm, and he knocked the wind out of me. And then all I see him, him raise his hand up like he wanted to fight. And you know how you get the wind knocked out of you? It must be mental, because as soon as I saw him raise his hand up, I didn't give a fuck. I jumped up, and we just, and we just got to fighting just like that. We And they had to break us up and everything. And, 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 and you were getting ready for a fight? I was getting ready for a fight, too. Wow. And he and Rico was a fucking menace. After that, I gave, I never gave him no leeway. I never gave Rico no no leeway. Where we, we we like brothers and shit. <laughs> yeah. But when we swore, I never gave him no more leeway. So you put it the work on him. Oh, I, I, after that, I was putting my foot all in his ass. <laughs> From that day go, every time we every time we went, I was putting my foot in Rico's ass. And every, we got to bring Rico on one oh, day. It's personal. Yeah. You can yeah. see yeah. it's personal. Yeah, I, bro, I, I still feel the fire in your. Ass. Oh man, I I never had nobody do that. I never had nobody do that. I just remember when you asked me, "Have you ever been dropped?" Because yeah. they never dropped me or nothing. And they never knocked me out, but Rico did. He 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 need me so hard. I flew. I didn't, I don't even. It was it must have been happened fast because I don't even remember. I, I just I was just in between the the, the um, garage door and a, and a boxing ring in a little crevice, holding my stomach, and he acted like he won. <laughs> Anybody ever did some bullshit like that to you in in, in training? No, oh, no, not yet. Because you big as fuck. That's yeah. why I said I wasn't that big. Yeah. How, what do you walk around at? Two sixty. 260. God yeah. damn. He's Bro, big, he's a big boy. He's big as well. I've seen him uh, the first time I met you a couple years back at US Open. We were at the bungalow. Yeah. Do you remember yeah, that? With yeah, Billy Kemper, yeah, a big yeah. wave surfer. 
You know that bar in Huntington Beach? Oh, yeah, I like that place. Yeah, and he was yeah. yoked. Jack, I think you were... No, it was the same. I you never, were pretty big. I, yeah, but I always walk around this way. Even yeah. when I'm off, off season, I just... This way. Oh, got it. I lose a little bit muscle, but I keep it heavy, you know? Yeah, he, he was jacked. And I remember Pat Tenori from Ruka. Oh, yeah. And we were all there and Billy Kemper. And they're like, oh, that's Bushesha. This is five, six years ago, maybe. And Billy Kemper, who's a very famous big wave surfer, he's like, oh, yeah, that dude's a monster. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I could probably take him. <laughs> and, and, like, and like, I go tap on his shoulder. He's wearing like a slim fit tee mm-hmm. and he's pretty yoked. And when he turned around, like he didn't speak good English. He was like, he's Brazilian. He kind of has this accent. Anybody that's Brazilian has this accent. The ears are a little messed up. You're like, all right, I got to chill, right? <laughs> so I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, I'm just, I'm just messing around, just tapping on his shoulder. <laughs> and I was like, I'm with those guys. <laughs> like, don't bite me. And then he was so nice. And at first, because he just turns around, he's got a, he's big and menacing personality. And I was like, oh man, this guy would kill me. Like, because <laughs> strong and big. And then when he like shook my hand, I was like, oh, I, I, there's no chance. He already knew what to do just by shaking my hand. I go, he is the champion. Yeah, yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm chilling. I'm not going to mess with you. And then we, <laughs> we had fun all night. I was like, this guy's the man. And then showed me a few things at Ruka. And, and like, ever since then, this guy's been one of a kind. And today's actually a special day. It's November. It's kicking off. He is our uh, newest athlete for Jackson. Oh, uh, yeah. look to the team. Head, head to mates, toe. Mates. This guy was the first guy to help me build in this MMA category and boxing and kind of helping me take it to the next level for Jackson, the jewelry brand, because yeah, we want to be able to give back I'm, to the community. I'm, I'm seeing what you guys doing with the brand. It's it's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy for you to see what you guys are building. It's yeah. Just unbelievable, you know? Yeah, I remember when I hit him up, because a lot of MMA fans are watching this, and he has a, an amazing following. We've been friends for 10 years. One of the first guys I ever worked with when I was, like, 20 years old, making merch and trying to build brands at, with my dad at my paintball parks. And he gave me a shot. I was probably 21, 20. He's like, yeah, I'll let you make merch for me. I'll let you help me build. I had to do, like, a big cartel website. No Shopify, no nothing. We were using Facebook and believed in me since day one. Oh, yeah. Literally, when people talk about, you know, not to sit here and polish them, but when people talk about good people, yeah. one of a kind. So when I was building the jewelry brand, I'm like, how can I build a, a podcast that really gives back to MMA community? Because I love boxing and MMA and fighting. And I was like, oh, if I do it Rampage at the host, we can really tell good stories and bring on all the biggest guests. And he's been all in and really, really for the fans. So for everybody listening at home, huge shout out to Rampage. Really, you know, he's a world yeah. champion and he's one of the greats. He doesn't need to do this every week. Yeah. He does it for them. But I think it's something, it's something um, good for guys to have and stuff right now. Like the world is so crazy and it's so, so much negativity out there. Like yeah. we just, we just hang back here. We laugh a little bit. We joke yeah. around. We talk about the sport we love and we keep all the politics out of here and stuff like that. We don't really talk about the, we, yeah, you know, it's, sure. it's the world so is fun. like There's crazy. many other things that we can talk about it, right? Yeah. yeah. So much different opinions and just bring it like. Yeah. yeah no, none of us are going to solve any yeah, of the issues. That's exactly. the biggest thing. When people talk politics, it's like, good, have an opinion. That's yeah. what's great about yeah. America. But, yeah. but people don't be... know how to talk. People right. want to yeah. fight, right? right. Yeah, it's so, like, why are you getting aggressive? I'm not the, yeah, I'm not the right. person to go handle yeah. it Everybody get offended. Yeah. So like, yeah. We like to do something different. Yeah. He's building something great for, for men. Like the, I love the jewelry. I love uh, I love the, the clothing line and everything he done. Now he's doing like the bags and stuff. Yeah. Like, man, I can't, I can't travel to go nowhere without people trying to take my bag. People yeah. asking me for they want fans and stuff. Well, I'm like, hey, let me let me have that. Yeah. You can get another one. Like, hell no, I got yeah. this one. Yeah. Man, the, the stuff that he's doing is just so great. But, yeah, no, but it's amazing. It's amazing. But today I want to talk about Pusetta. <laughs> well, what's amazing about him? So, Bushesha, you were actually the. <laughs> but you said Bushetta. He knows. He knows that. <laughs> you don't know what I'm talking about. Wait, Bushetta. No, the, the, the bread, the, you never the had. You, the, the you never had. You never had that. Before. No, Italian. Yeah, I always have it, Bushetta. You ever had? That? I ever had the. No, what is <laughs> it? You it's on you. It's on Wait, you. What is it? You never had. You never had the pusetta. <laughs> what is that? It's uh, it's it's right near the popozuta. I like it. Yeah, one more popozuta. Like burrata, like the cheese. You cut it up. You... <laughs> What is going on here? What's he talking about? He, like, he got some Portuguese. Oh, it's Portuguese. Yeah. Yeah. I, was making I thought you were talking about bruschetta no. with, the, with the bread and the tomatoes. No, I don't eat that. He knows oh, all what the. What do you eat? <laughs> he, he, that, he, yeah, I, was, I was talking about what I was eating. <laughs> what are you eating? <laughs> He's eating that. You, you explain. You explain. Oh, that. is that? It's uh, Pinocha. The down south. The south. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, oh, know, so you, you, you know, you know, you go down south? No, hell no. <sighs> That's so crazy because you know the video of him in Czech Congo where he's behind Czech Congo? Yeah. And he's like, Czech Congo, they're like doing the, you saw the video? No, I ain't no such thing. He's making shit up. <laughs> Don't, bro, don't listen to <laughs> he it. He looks at me all serious. <laughs> I want to ask you, would you ever fight with the, with the gi on? Like, yeah. like, like they used to do in Japan and Pride? Yeah. 
Would you no. be interested in a fight with the Guillaume? No. Ah, no, no. You don't think it's too much advantage for the opponent. Oh, it's for the advantage for the opponent? Oh, I think so. No, that's advantage for you. No, why? Why would Gracie fight with the Guillaume in that fight? He doesn't fight with the Like Guillaume. in that first Back fight. A long time ago, he yeah, did. Yeah, the first I fight. I don't, I don't remember what fight was in the pride. Up. That the guy in the He's middle smart. of the fight tries to take the gear out and the other guy hold and don't let and stop punching. <laughs> I like... Yeah, I, I don't think gives that advantage. Oh, you don't think? Uh, yeah, when it's when one guy is wearing it, it's not the advantage for you, right? Because no. it's the advantage for the for the for your opponent. Yeah, but if both was wearing it, then it's you think it would be fair? Being honest, in MMA, I don't know. Like because I wouldn't try like use the grip. I would try yeah. like to use like MMA style, you know. So yeah. I've seen people wear it before. Yeah, but. But you don't see people grabbing their gear, right? You know that right. guy? Yeah, I remember that's 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 Ken Shamrock. Hey, he a legend. He's a legend. He's coming on the show soon. Oh, okay. Against yeah. who? Against Hoisey. Yeah, yeah look, he's wearing a gear. This is like UFC one, I think. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. He's not holding Hoist's gear, right? He he don't know he didn't know to. He didn't he didn't think to hold it. But isn't that an advantage for him so he can like move around better or no? I don't think so. Because he can like grab his gear and look at Hoist. Hoist is using his own gear. Where? Hey, lucky he was grabbing it and trying to choke him with it. <laughs> <I> said, <"Where?" laughs> He's like, don't talk bad about the gi. No, because I can't see. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not really, you know. I wouldn't fight with the gi. Maybe to walk in with the gi, you oh, know, yeah. like yeah. just yeah. to do the entrance. But yeah, I, see, I see you wear the, the BJ pen. Well, here, oh, yeah. here's actually, actually, I should start off with this. So you were Ruka's, like, main athlete. You're yeah. a world champion, and you help, you know, Pat, which is one of the best I would say innovators in fashion for MMA and sport and clothing. You were one of their main dudes for years. And as of this month, uh, you know, Ruka and Quicksilver and Billabong, all those brands like sold, right? And yeah. so now they're in other places and a lot of the founders and the, the brains behind those brands are where, gone. Where are they? I mean, I think they're in like Walmart and Costco now, right? It's things like that. Yeah, that's the thing. Like one big group bought all the brands, but this group doesn't really care about anything. They care about numbers, right? So... When I went to Ruka, when I met uh, Pat, was 2009. I yeah. met him on the mat, training with him. So it was like legit, you know. He was training. He was in La Habra. And that's when I... I knew about Ruka already because of Leo. He always wore wearing. So, oh, Ruka is cool. But then I... Okay, then after I met Pat, I know why it was so cool. Because it was like the the, the family vibe the tribe he creates like a everybody care about each other we went to hawaii together oh, all time the, of my life so it was like a good thing that he created when this big group got so there is no more such mm -hmm. thing so okay no more no nothing there so and pat left so everybody like okay there is no the tribe vibe anymore the family vibe so everybody's like you know what so Everybody finished their agreement and everybody left. Yeah. It, it, no, nobody even tried to renew because yeah. it was cool, but it's not anymore. Mm. I'm, so yeah. that's why. And without I Pat, it's and, yeah. You know, it's mm. the, these guys built the brand with Pat, but Pat was an innovator in bringing this uh, MMA culture and fashion lifestyle. But really, what he was an innovator is giving these guys a platform, right? Mm. Like because of Pat, all these fighters and MMA guys got to to really experience what it was like to be a part of a brand and. He brought it to the mainstream world. He did yeah. something no one else could ever do. And I, I've seen you in there in the gym before, but even Bushesha, like I went to Hawaii with him for Ruka Aloha and you had Maddie Matheson cooking burgers. You have Evan Mock skateboarding, one of the best, craziest models in the game right now. You have Bushesha teaching everybody, you know, and it's like, I'm, I'm doing jujitsu. And then at night, Billy Kemper's teaching me how to surf. And then in the afternoon, I'm with Brophy on the skate park. Like you can't get that experience. And then right. Pat's driving me around the island with Burt Crack and Naminsky and all with, these guys. With, with like, butt crack. No, Burt Crack. He's like a famous tattoo artist. Uh, from, uh, I from thought you said we're driving around. He's got Obi talking about why. So it's like- yeah, a, weird, huh? That yeah, was yeah. a weird trip, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like a, a crazy experience. So we were excited to be able to get behind Bouchesha and kind of bring those world champions still give them a platform to promote them and work with them and then how people kind of come in the fold will have some one-off items same thing kind of we did with you and yeah. be able to showcase you guys because you guys are world champions you guys mm -hmm. are elite you guys are the best and right. to be able to support you guys and let the community support you i think is amazing ruka, ruka was huge i remember the last time i was, I was just in columbia i saw them with the with a ruka tent 
oh, out yeah. there in Colombia. I didn't know they was even out there. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, then, yeah, 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 it's everywhere. But then they sold, and so the the company that brought them, they just they know that they have a big name, and they could just make the product cheaper, and people would, would you know buy it. I think it's like a licensing deal. I don't know how they do the manufacturing side, but I I think it's like a licensing deal. They just buy it and then. Yeah. What what if a company came to you right now and offer you ten like what like two billion for Jackson? Would you sell two billion? <laughs> I mean two billion, yeah. <laughs> but then I would take like half a billion and go start another one and bring all my friends. Because one thing that I think you could see what we're doing different with Jackson is we're the number one men's jewelry brand. We're making the number one men's jewelry. We're not trying to be the number one clothing brand. We're not trying to be the number one eyewear brand. But everything else we make is the highest level, the highest quality. It's all Italian craftsmanship. It's, it still is at the highest level. So we're, we're competing with everybody at the highest level of quality. But at the same time, we're focused on what we do the best, which is number one men's jewelry brand. But that's what's allowing us to give all of these amazing athletes and family that we have here a platform and, you know, allow them to go do things they need. Like, you know, guys need budget to travel the world and train. Guys need budget to travel to make video parts and clips. That's why we have P-Rod and Sheckler, the two greatest athletes. And to be honest, like what Ruka did in MMA, I'm trying to do in jewelry, which is I'm trying to do something that no luxury brand can even do, is bring all these athletes together from all different walks of life and build a real culture and community. I mean, it's it's Wednesday here. We have Wagyu cooking. We have world champions walking around, Tiafima Lopez, Adrian Broner. We have a gym full of Anderson Silva's kids, people working <laughs> yeah. out. And the so yeah, the other yeah, 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 we have the whole boys. You know, it's like so. It's like we're trying to do the same concept. That's what makes me so happy about Bouchesha. Is Bouchesha is such a humble person. He embodies what jujitsu is. So if there was one guy you could get that really speaks to the consumer and speaks to the people and the culture of what jujitsu is as an art, it's this guy, the most yeah, humble he, samurai I've ever met. He was the most famous jujitsu guy before the um, ra- ra- random Gordies. And- yeah. I mean, do you, do you feel like do you feel like you did it all, and then you kind of paved the way for him to come in, and then he got all that attention? But he really did a lot for jujitsu as well, though. No, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But uh, but not me. But back in the day, like if we look back, Royce, like then uh, Royle, like Roger, talking about the the Gracie yeah. family, they have like all different generations. My 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 master Leo Vieira, so he fought back in like nine something. So all these guys paved the way. Mm. Of course, when I started fighting as black belt, was much better because I was getting money. These guys, I uh, remember like uh, Minotauro, Arona. That was like yeah. a. These guys used to fight in the gi, but there was no money at all. Mm. Then they just start fighting MMA. So I think those guys start like really paving the way. And then, of course, me, I got like a much better like timing of these guys because I was making money. And then, of course, uh, the timing was much better now when Gordon started like showing up. And with all the McGregor uh, era, the, the like talking, the trash talking, he does that really well. So I think it was like a perfect combination, you know, of he's, he's doing good. He's like doing the trash talking and he's American. America didn't have like a mm-hmm. like a big idol, and mm-hmm. he was like the first biggest idol of like for Americans. So I think it was a combination of everything, and of course he works hard and yeah on the mat, off the mat, with the media. I mean, so. he's just at the Logan Paul fight. I mean, the guy's always in media. Yeah. So and, and even with the drama he had with Nikki Rod and the match he had with you, like he still is one of the most dominant yeah, no, grappler sure. jujitsu athletes. Do you consider it jujitsu even if there's no gi? Or is it grappling, wrestling? Yeah, no. Doesn't game. matter. What you mean? I feel like a lot of people. They always. I always read comments, and everybody on the internet has an opinion. Like Brazilian jiu-jitsu in a gi, no gi, ADCC. That should be called grappling. If it's uh, shorts uh, and a shirt, it should be called wrestling. You know, like no, it's a different sport. Oh, it is. Oh yeah, jiu-jitsu with the gi and jiu-jitsu no gi is a different sport. But you still call it jiu-jitsu. Or you call yeah, it grappling. Yeah, no gi, wrestling. grappling. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I know always, what you're saying. People I'm always just, be trying to yeah. correct me when I when I, when I I talk, but it's like, I watch these guys. It's like, bro, it's not the same ideas. But even Gordon, he say, like, he's the greatest of all time, but he always say no gi because... Oh, that's good. That's respectful. would be like, it's too much, you know? Like, is he never fought the gi. How, how never? Much he, no, he never fought in the gi. So, you know what I mean? That's so crazy. That's why he say, like, he's the GOAT, but no gi GOAT. You know mm, what I mean? So yeah. it's, how would he do in a gi? 
I don't know. He never did, right? But <laughs> it's like I said, it's a different sport. It's, it's totally different. Yeah. I train with a gi on, and yeah, it is in all gears. It's totally different. It's, it's very. It's, it's you got to respect people for yeah. doing jujitsu in the gi. It's totally different, and the grip it, it makes your grip really strong. Yeah, right? yeah, and tired too. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, yeah, it's different muscles. It's different yeah. game. It's different reactions. It's different everything. Different submissions. Everything. Yeah, I mean, look at the Rotolo brothers. They're yeah, like nineteen man. years old, and they just won one eighty cc, and then one just won one. You know, Caden's eye. That's they're, they're Jackson athletes. No gi. No gi. And they're smashing people. I mean, they're young. They're 19 years old, and they're doing things no one can do. And mm. they're, they're. I don't. Know, I don't want to call them masters yet, but look at. I mean, their skill and their technique is far beyond anybody. They're beating grown men. You know. Yeah. They. They. They becoming like legends for sure. Yeah. They. They being. They. They building up like a good mm. thing. Yeah, we for sure are gonna have one of them in here next week. Who do you think the greatest? Uh, Gi in a gi Brazilian jiu jitsu, the greatest athlete of all time was besides yourself. In the gi. I think we have to say uh, Roger Gracie, uh, my opinion, Leandro Law. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Rodolfo is one of the greatest, too. Rodolfo Vieira, yeah. who fights in UFC now. Uh, that is, like, it's hard to say one guy, yeah. right? Like, Leandro Lowe, R.I.P. Yeah. One, what, what, of, one of his best friends. What, he, he, he passed? That was the... the, the yeah, he, got, he got killed in Brazil for a policeman out of duty in a nightclub. Rec recently? Like one year ago. I think I heard something. Yeah, that's, yeah. We, we were watching that video. That was his best friend. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Yeah, no, it was... Uh, but he was one of the best, you know? For sure. And what the police, if you don't you don't want to talk about it, what the police? No, I mean, now I can talk about it. What, what, what happened? Being honest, they were in a nightclub, and it's a small city. Uh, not a small city, but it's a small circle. Like, if you go out in LA a lot, yeah. a lot of times it's going to be the same group of people that you're going to, mm -hmm. especially because. So they knew each other, but they never had, like, a beef or anything. But the guy was a purple belt of jiu-jitsu, so the guy knew him, mm. you know. So the guy was going after him, picking him, picking him. And they had like a bottle off the table. The guy came, took the bottle off, like, you know, so sooner, like, after a lot, uh, Leandro, like, took him down, but didn't even punch him or anything, asking him to stop, got the bottle back, and then he ran away, got the gun, and came back and shot him in the head. One, like, in the middle in the of club? the In the club. <laughs> He's not he, even did, supposed to be with the gun inside the club, but he was because he was a police. In Brazil, it's kind of they, they allow it. And after that, he left. They don't he, find went, him. Went, he went to a whorehouse, got a hooker, sleeping in a hotel, and then that's when they followed him. So, like, the guy killed the guy, like, killed Leandro like nothing, and went to another club, got, like, a hooker, spent the night, so he know he's gonna he's know he's gonna go to prison for a long time. He's in prison, but the what's the name? The trial, the trial, the trial. yeah, not yet. So just waiting. But it's weird, you know. Brazil is uh, justice is weird. So yeah. I hope he pays. I like, can stay forever, like yeah, the life, life lifetime. But unreal in yeah. Brazil is like where 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 are you from in Brazil? What city are you from? Santos. Santos. Santos is in Sao Paulo State. Oh, I was in Sao Paulo? Yeah. Mm. You have, you, have you been in the coast of Sao Paulo? No. I, I know I've been to Sao Paulo, but I don't know where. Just the city. Yeah, just the yeah, city. It's a big city. Oh, yeah. I've been to the city. I don't know. I don't remember where I was in Sao Paulo. Yeah, probably like they took you to a good place. So <laughs> yeah, they took yeah. me to a, a good place. I was with, um, you ever heard of uh, Fabiano Iha? I heard. I he, heard. He, his he name. used to fight in the UFC a long time ago. He was my first ever jujitsu um, coach, right? Oh, yeah. And um, one time he took me back. He took me to um, Florianópolis. That's where he's yeah, from. Yeah. That's the good part of Brazil. Yeah, yeah. that's where everybody go on on vacation. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. A lot of because it's the, the part the south of Brazil. So a lot of people from Europe back in the day, like, start like living there. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people from. Europe, you know, and you yeah. saw a lot of the, yeah. the beautiful women in Brazil yeah. are all from the South. Yeah, you so, know what I mean? so many beautiful women. One time yeah. he took me to a nightclub in Sao Paulo, right? And he gave me a table. They gave me a table. And it was so many beautiful women at this table. I said, no, I can't sit here. <laughs> I never said that before in my life. I'm talking about they was all... You scared? Yeah. They was all nines and tens, tall, 
beautiful, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. And I said, no, I couldn't see her. But the reason why I couldn't, because I already had two of my girlfriends with me. <laughs> She brought so, two girls to Brazil. <laughs> yeah, I had, menace. I, I had two girlfriends, right? And they heard I was going to Brazil. They was like, no way you're going to Brazil without us. No way. Oh, you're <laughs> out of your country. And they knew they were both with you at the same time? Yeah, we, we, was, a, we was a throuple. And you just <laughs> drug flew drug. with both of them. You put them in coach, you stay in first class? Yeah, or? fuck that. I put their <laughs> ass in coach. I Probably like two, two, two nights ago, I, I go on Instagram. This girl's like, oh my God, I just saw, saw your friend. I'm like, who? They're like, Oh, the, the, the model-looking guy, he fights. I'm like, who's that? <laughs> who is Rampage. that? Huh? Rampage <laughs> in the club with the, with the energy drink, F3. It's the energy drink, F3. Y yeah. He's pouring it down this girl. This girl's going crazy. They're all screaming. I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a good podcast this week. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he a menace now. Because like, <laughs> he's all lean. He's yeah. working out every day. So he's crazy in the club. Yeah, this podcast is getting me a lot of attention with the ladies. Oh, that's good. Yeah, uh. bro, you like the ladies, don't you? Oh, come on, bro. <laughs> you like the ladies. Come on, bro. For, first time I ever met this guy, we were... All right, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you, but you didn't you didn't say No, I like the ladies. What are you talking about? Good, I'm a lady's nuts all over your face. face. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Every day. What am I gonna do? I can't fight him. So I gotta sit here and take it, you know? <laughs> Got him! Yeah. Might have to get Shannon Briggs. <laughs> oh, oh man, that's yeah. fucked up. <laughs> hey, in turn, we're wrapping up right now. In terms of uh MMA, who's someone you wanna fight in MMA? I don't think like about fighting. No? no one specific, you know. Just like day by day, fighting one fight at a time. But I don't have like, oh, I want to fight this guy. But you like fighting in one or you want to go to UFC? No, I'm fighting. I, I'm happy there. I'm, I'm enjoying having, like, having yeah. a good time. They, they were the one that gave me the, the, the opportunity. Mm. So you should go to one. Bro, I heard one is actually they actually get more views and stuff than the UFC. Yeah. They're big. They're bigger yeah. than what people think. They're bigger. They yeah. might, might be bigger than the UFC. They posted a stat. I was gonna pull it up right now. So they have more views than NBA, baseball, NFL, and UFC in social media views total combined views. Yeah, because right. like Asia, if you get just China itself, it's huge. It's over. Yeah. Right. You should go do a boxing fight in one. Set it up. Wait, didn't one have Demetrius Johnson do one round Muay Thai, yeah. one round MMA? Yeah, yeah. that was How'd huge. He do? He won. He, he, the Demetrius, the first round was Muay Thai. Then he fought to the guy who was a legend, Rod Tan. Yeah. And then he did good, actually. Yeah. Everybody thought he would be like running away, but mm. they really brawl. Yeah. The second round was MMA. So Demetrius took him down and yeah. got his back because the guy didn't have any idea of MMA. Mm -hmm. But it was yeah. a good fight. It was, good. it was very interesting, huh? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I think I they should that. do more like that. They yeah. did only one, but I think I'm would, down to do something like that. Yeah, I would love to see you do like a like a no gi match. So you just wrestle. No, 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 no. MMA, no, Muay Thai. No. What do you what? think? No, I'm not good at jiu jitsu. No, you, you and him, <laughs> no, no, no gi. No, no. No? Too, no, hell no. He's too big. Hell no. no. You'd have a blast. Well, how much money they they pay? That's what I'm saying. You get a couple mil for sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. you didn't say that. Okay. It's in Malaysia, Singapore. Uh, Singapore. I mean, all over Asia. Yeah. Uh, most oh, like yeah, you the, go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Asia, oh, Him yeah. in Asia? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Loves, Bob, Bob, Bob loves Sapp does, doesn't even <laughs> leave it there. That doesn't even like want to get out of Thailand. I heard. Yeah, yeah. He love it out there. Yeah. yeah. You guys, you guys. It's like a king want, there, right? I don't yeah. even want to know yeah. what they do over there. And then in terms of like jujitsu, like you've seen it, you're the champion 13 times, like one of the best to ever do it. One of the best. I don't think anybody will ever even come close. You know, you have. Gaval and the Mendez brothers and Gordon Ryan, you have all these guys that are big names, but what you did, I don't think anybody will ever pass. Where do you see jujitsu going in the future? I think it's it's amazing to see what's what was, even when I started and what became now. Um, this year in June, I was in a jujitsu con. There was like a just like a big exposition, not exposition, but a big thing for UFC. Mm. Uh, for UFC, or just like a UFC Expo, they yeah. have, but they have the Jiu Jitsu Con. Was like amazing. It was like a lot of people, like thousands of people, like walking in shops, uh, workshops, tournaments for masters, for adults, for kids. So it was good to see like everybody coming from the whole world to Las Vegas to see like such an event like that. So it was good to be part of that. I was there teaching a seminar. Mm -hmm. And of course, competition, uh, the competition side, it's growing. So they paying a lot of good money. Yeah. They just did a new tournament in, in Abu Dhabi. P 
people fighting in the cage, just like one championship. So it's good to see like so many options nowadays. Mm. Before it was only oh you feel like or you fight in the gi or you go MMA. Then they start they, they sh- the ADCC show up. And then now that is like a lot of options. So people are making money just fighting Jiu Jitsu. So that's good. People making a live off of this of this sport. Yeah. So that was something was really hard for me. I, I, I was lucky that I had like Ruka support me through the hardest part of my career because I moved to America, mm. was a new country. So I got a sponsorship that believed me, like Ruka, Pat. And then after that, Show Your All, that my, my older sponsorship, my, uh, a Gi brand, support, still support me nowadays still my sponsor so it was good to have like those uh important people mm-hmm. uh, the bear from, that's yeah, yeah. bear too yeah, from show sure. and pat from ruka was like two people that really believe in my dream and make my dream my dream possible but i was like one i was winning so a lot of people didn't have like the same yeah, the same opportunity. But nowadays, people are getting more, more and more opportunities to teach, like seminars, to get sponsors. Of course, uh, have like opportunity to win prize money events. So it's it's great to see what jujitsu is becoming. And I see a lot of jujitsu history is being talked about now. Like YouTube has a lot of history now. They talk about the Gracies, and a lot of people are talking about form and technique. One thing that I, I recently saw, and I know these guys personally because of you, uh, Leandro and Leo Vera, that they, they're brothers, right? Yeah. And one's younger than the other. They started check mat, right? Yeah, three brothers. Three brothers, three yeah. brothers. Did one of them teach Khabib how to wrestle? No, no, no how to wrestle, but okay. jujitsu. Jujitsu. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, clarify one, this for me. Yeah, no, because um, I remember one fight. I think there was. Uh, one fight to remember, I think Khabib broke the record of takedowns in one fight. Mm. So everybody was like, oh my God, 20, 20 takedowns in a fight. That's hard. It is. Like to do like one takedown, it takes energy, right? Yeah. And he did like 20. So everybody was so impressive. Then Leandro, he was like, oh yeah, that's good. But why don't you take him down only one time and control? <laughs> so I think that makes sense, right? Yeah, so why you need to? Yeah. So, but the way that he did, like, yeah, so people like, oh, kind of like, that's true, yeah. So you need kind of like three takedowns, control the whole round and beat and get the submission. So he was one of the guys that teach a lot of jiu-jitsu for... Which brother? Leandro. Leandro. For Khabib, uh, Luke, Luke Rocco. Uh, of course, Luke ha- had his coach, but he was training at the time. Uh, DC and Kane. Wow. The time that they were all champions, Leandro was teaching grappling for them. At AK? At AK. Wow. So, wow. Uh, of course, they con- they, Leandro is really good coach, and they really a good, really good job with the KC, yeah. the position that they smash the knees, like kill the knee, you know? So that's... Uh, is it his t- technique? Knee control, right? They they call the KC, and Leandro was one of those that helps a lot these guys to to get better. Of course, not teach them grappling because they knew grappling, mm-hmm. but to control and to adapt a little bit better with the wrestling to control and get the submission, get the good gun and prowl. Before DC didn't submit fights. After that, DC started like getting yeah. some submissions. So it was like Leandro was a good. A big part of that. Man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that, those, that's like a good lineup. Yeah, right there. yeah. I was eating at a barbecue at Pat's house. I was eating picanha steak with all the boys. And I got to hang out with him. And then the next day, I was watching him train Cheeto. Yeah. And then I have that video on my Instagram of me and him training. He was teaching it to me. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I rolled around with him for like an hour right when I was trying to get my blue belt. Mm. And then I got my blue belt. And I go, oh, now I'm a, I'm a master at this. And he goes, hey, slow down. <laughs> and I was training for like one year and a half. And I got my blue belt from uh, Alan Goes yeah. at Ruka because of Pat Tenori. He set it all up for me to train every morning. And then he walks in. I'm like, no, I'm good. I don't need any help. Like, I just got blue belt. And, and everybody's like, bro, come on. This guy's like the greatest of all time. Mm. I was like, all right, cool. And I'm learning, you know, you don't know. I don't know better. And he was teaching me these techniques and telling me the story. And I was like, wow, this is the craziest story I ever heard. And then I was watching on Instagram and there's like some real, and it's like Khabib's knee sweep, or like the way he smashed his yeah. knee into the ground. 
But this is a, a, a Brazilian technique? Is this a jiu-jitsu technique? What is this? No, it's like these guys, like uh, Leo Vieira, mm -hmm. Leandro Vieira, and Ricardo Vieira. They were three brothers that grew up doing jiu-jitsu. So they do this since they wow. were like little kids. So they see jiu-jitsu in a really different way. Mm -hmm. And Leo, Leo helped uh, Vitor Bell for oh, like wow. a lot of uh, Demian Maia. He was like wow, coach Demi, of Demi Maia. So Demi Maia, oh, he's OG at Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. So yeah. Leo was like coach, for, like he he was coach for Demi for a long time. So he knows a lot of Jiu Jitsu for MMA. Now we, uh, uh, I train, I still train with Leo. So, really? Yeah. Because but he's so small. You roll with him? I roll. Sometimes he go. We went to Asia. I have no train partners. <laughs> He has to. No. Do, yeah. How much he weigh? He's my height. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. But but I mean, you fight in there. You have nobody to train with. Yeah. So come on, put the gloves on. And, and he still gives you good work, huh? He's oh, yeah, still great, yeah, right? Yeah, because he always, okay, do that, do that. Like, he's yeah. a really good coach. So he's, Unreal. He's been with me since I moved to, no, since I was 17. Unreal. Yeah, so I train under checkmate, so. How old is he? 40. Five or something. Why wow, he's still young? Yeah, yeah. he's boss. Mm. One of the goats. Yeah, he. It's like him and the Mendes brothers and Gabal mm. that generation. You were talking about uh, Rico Rodriguez, but I remember he did one of the most legendary fights against Mark Kerr. But he was like, this side, Mark Kerr was the yeah. best. And Mark Kerr couldn't score a point on him. No way. So they did one of the best, the most famous fights at the EDCC. Was Leo and Mark Kerr. After you pull it out, they tried to see. I like, want to see that. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy because Mark Kerr was squeezing his head but couldn't like really score. Mm. And Mark Kerr got tired after the fight. Leo during the fight got a penalty. So it wasn't a really a point. But if you step back or if you stall, you get a penalty. And then he lost the fight. Leo? After, Leo, yeah. Because he because he stepped back. Yeah, you know. He's I, a smaller guy. Yeah, but I mean, they found a way to give like a penalty mm. and he lost. After the fight, Mark Kerr went to the locker room and said, I'm done. I'm not fighting anymore. Then everybody, what? But then after he's like, no, no, I'm done. I'm tired. Like, I'm too tired. Like, then they kind of forced him. He's like, okay, I'll try again. Then he fought the whole thing. Then won the whole tournament. But he almost gave up after the fight because he was so tired because he didn't expect a tough fight. From the smaller for guy. The, for the smaller guy in the opening round. Yeah. So it was like a really famous. Do you know who Mark Kerr is? Mark Kerr yeah. is the smashing machine. So he yeah. was like. He was a big dog. Yeah, super jack back then. Yeah, he was a big boy. Yeah. That's crazy. I like that. I like that story out of nowhere. Bouchester yeah. just pulling out gems out of nowhere. Yeah. No, because he was talking about Rico Rodriguez. And yeah, I yeah. remember about yeah. all the big guy. Yeah. And because that's the thing, like Leo fought. He, he never fought MMA, but he yeah. trained a lot with BJ Penn too. Yeah. So yeah. He always be involved with BJ with uh, MMA, so he knows how adapted Jiu Jitsu for Got for it. Gi, you know, Gi and MMA. So that's. The, uh, you know, uh, Mark Kerr, like, the, the, he's making a movie. Uh, they make a movie about his life called Smashing Machine. They said uh, Rock is going to uh, play him. I wonder if they have that. Yeah, that would I, You be heard crazy. about that? I, I, I heard. I heard about I wonder if they have that, you, uh, with yeah. that, that story with him and. and they what's need that? To. Well, Leo. Leo, yeah, with, Leo, I, yeah. I, because there was a really. Because, like, it's hard to, like, talk about somebody's life but for sure they're gonna talk about the adcc because it was mm. a big huge yeah. title of his yeah. career yeah. i don't know if they're gonna talk about that fight <laughs> yeah. but, yeah. but yeah. would be good you yeah know? so it's a good story though makes yeah. it makes the whole movie better yeah all right last thing before you i got one question when you get your coral belt coral i don't even know i think you need to have like 30 years of black belt or something right that's it so i think he's not even 30 yet yeah Maybe when about 50 something, 51, I don't know. But and then they just give it to you, huh? I don't even know how that works. I never <laughs> think that far, you know? I don't even know what I'm going to have like a I dinner, saw the other day you know? on Instagram, I DM'd it to him. I'm like, how do I get this thing? He goes, bro, come on. It's like, <laughs> you got like 20. I was like, this is an amazing belt. It's red. It's got white stripes, the whole thing. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's, it looks better than a black belt. I've never even seen one. Core belt? Yeah, like yeah. Uh, just, you have to be like plus 30 years of black belt. How many people you off the top of your head, if you can think? How many people you know got one of those? Like Hickson has, you know, yeah. Hickson Gracie, but guys off this. Yeah. Uh, Megaton. Megaton. Yeah, you yeah. Did, you, yeah. You, yeah, yeah he Megaton. He got one? Yeah, that's why when you were. when you were when you were talking to Mackenzie, I go, oh, oh, Coral Belt. No, no, he was, uh, we had Mackenzie in here. You're going to see that later. Man. He was so disrespectful. Her, her dad was right there. 
And he was calling it uh, Megaton. Megaton. He said, and your daughter, Megathon. I did that. Yeah, no, he did that. He was mind. very disrespectful. Nah, you were out of your school. He called her Megathon, like the, like the panties. You believe that? You think I would do that with a call bell in the corner? Yeah. No, hey. Yeah, he was very disrespectful. You see that? And then, yeah. look, she had a boyfriend. She had a boyfriend, and he was asking her, who do you call daddy? When you say daddy, who are you talking about? Your your boyfriend or your dad? Right in front of her, right in front of Megathon. Kenzie Dern's dad's right there. And he goes, he goes, who who would you call daddy if they were both in the room? Your dad or your husband? I'm like, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think? It was him. That? You're it out of your him. skull, dude. Wait till you watch it. It was him. Wait till you watch it. Oh my yeah. God. He's, I gotta do it. It. He's the best though. Uh, only he could get away with it because no one's gonna say anything to him. Yeah. He'd still like, kill someone. <laughs> that was a- Listen, before we go, I just gotta say we just had 45,000 subscribers. We just had one of the biggest weeks we've ever had on our podcast. It's MMA and boxing. We also have the the skate show with Ryan Sheckler with a few episodes a month. Rampage, huge, huge love and thank you for everything you're doing for the MMA community and myself. And I love Shesha, it. Shesha, welcome to the team. And I just want to say one thing to all the fans that are watching. They're leaving so many comments. They watch live every Thursday. We have a new episode and we have, we did almost 2,000 people watch live. This is a brand new show and it just goes to show you MMA is going like this. Boxing is going like this and we got to support the community and, and we're just excited to be doing this. So that is for me. I appreciate everybody that's always that's always commenting. Yeah, thank you guys for the love. If there's anything you want to um, tell the fans, the MMA fans, you want anything coming up? In the yeah, fights? yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to say congrats for you guys, for you guys doing an amazing job and amazing to be part of that with you guys. And of course, uh, say to Rampage too, because when I grow up, I used to watch like uh, the old... What's the name that you put in the VHS? Yeah, VHS of Pride fights, oh, and yeah. I grew up watching this guy yeah. fighting uh, with my dad even before I started doing jiu-jitsu. So it was amazing, you know. And Damn, today, I feel I, old now. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to feel old, but <laughs> just to show like a lot of it's respect. Okay. Uh, I appreciate it. And That's respect, it was though. good, you know. And today, do something with you, it's it's amazing. So. Means a lot. Thank, thank you, you guys for the opportunity. That's, a, that's, so what, that's you, what I brother. love about thank this. You, and I hope you and I hope you, you know, you appreciate that that yes. everybody has that same love for you. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do I do appreciate it. But um if I'm being honest, like sometimes you just don't think about it, you know, as you yeah, fight well, for wait sure. till you get up there and you've been fighting for a couple of years and you're gonna have some Brazilian guys and Talking other people and American everybody looking up to you and you're gonna forget that you're gonna forget about that that people are watching you. Yeah. Because you know, I got to fighting because I loved it. You know, I love fighting and I and and I didn't I you didn't don't think, think about that, right? No. Just it comes with the package, right? It comes with the package. One time, you know, I, I used to have some crazy. I used to say some crazy stuff in my interviews. I kind of toned it down a lot because one time I went back home to Memphis and some young black kids were saying some shit that I was saying. I'm like, what the oh, fuck? Yeah. They was reciting my <laughs> my. Yeah, like, I was talking about fucking bitches and doing this yeah. and that and talking about shit. I was like. God damn. These yeah. kids was reciting my interviews. Yeah. So I toned it down a little yeah. bit because you just don't think about it. Yeah, like those, yeah. those what's the Spider-Man quotes, right? Yeah. Yeah, with big with superpowers yeah. come bigger responsibilities, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. This guy's quoting Marvel comic yeah. books. Yeah. I mean, but it's like kind of true, right? Yeah. And, but it was it was funny because he always Fighting against the Brazilians, you know? <laughs> I know that's crazy. Yeah, I, the first time I went to Brazil, I I I, I, w- I was in Hisifi training for a fight. I was training for Glover, yeah. and um and uh I was there training with a couple of my my guys with Mario Sucada and a couple of guys down there, and uh I was running down the street, and the police stopped me. I'm like, damn man, these Brazilians ain't gonna like me because mm. I don't follow a lot of Brazilians, mm. and he was like. Hey, Rampage, let me get a picture. I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> and then nice. the police wanted a picture with me. And then and 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 I learned that the the, the Brazilians, they're cool. They're nothing like Vanillet. <laughs> <laughs> they're cool. Hey, they're hey, nothing bro, like Vanillet. Sorry to cut you off real quick though, because we were about to end it. You talking about Vanderlei. Were you with him with the president? Of Brazil? Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you see this? No. Well, I, I don't want. I don't want to keep the, the. We were about to leave, and now we're about to say yeah, crazy. Yeah. So just real quick, why were you with the president of Brazil and Vanderlei? Because you know what I mean? Because now no. you're here with him. That's a little crazy. No, because it was like in Brazil, uh, election for president and was two guys, right? Uh-huh. Just like here, like yeah. Trump and Biden. And like Vanderlei, me, everybody was like supporting like Trump. <laughs> and you know what I mean? Because this guy is like similar to Trump here. 
No, it was like, know, just no. was the, no, the, no, the no, best I, way for you? Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. a lot of people Trump. don't like Trump. But I know, I know. A lot of people don't like Trump. We already talked about the politics earlier. I know, it's just a lot of people don't, I understand what you're saying. Like this, you yeah, like but, this, you know. Trump. <laughs> but there, that was the thing. So no one's going to say anything to you. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. I, I posted in my Instagram, yeah. you know, like, of course, a lot of people like it, a lot of people yeah. hate it, just yeah. like we were talking about. Oh, that's cool. I just didn't know why you were with him. No, but I mean, that was the thing because Vanderlei was involved with the politics too. So, was like an event that the president was talking for a lot of fighters. Oh, got it. So everybody who was like supporting him went for this, uh, like, oh, got it. Yeah, like yeah. president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you guys event. were training the president. No, no, oh, no. Yeah. It was like for the like for the was the last week of the <laughs> running for. They can use they can use um, Vanderlei for Secret Service to scare people away from <laughs> from mess with the president. <laughs> he a scary looking motherfucker. If, if Vanderlei was running for the president, would you would you vote for him? Uh, MMA, right? I would support the MMA. <laughs> would you vote for Vanderlei if he was running for president? Yeah, I would. For Vanderlei? If he what of Brazil? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you like, don't even like that, right? <laughs> yeah, I would. I, I would. I would vote for Vanderlei if he was running for president in, of Brazil. Yeah, I, me too. Me too. Yeah, because yeah, he's oh, MMA. Boy. You got to support MMA yeah, no matter what. Just like. Who you who you support? Tyson or uh, Francis? Uh, Francis, a hundred percent. Of course, everybody, everybody. He got the MMA flags. Right? Hey, I mean, he won. Yeah, but, yeah. but but I'm sad. I'm sad to hear that uh, a lot of people did before the fight didn't pick him to win. Though. We are, we he, all knew he was gonna win. Yeah. But, Even, uh, but, and, and, but being honest, nobody like. Of course, some people, but nobody thought that it would be. I mean, me personally, I thought he could win. But with a good hand and knocking yeah. him out, yeah. but I didn't. I I never like would bet like one dollar that he would fight ten rounds. Right, and Went he did, points. you know. But yeah. I thought he could win knocking him out. Yeah, that's what I said. That's why yeah. I said too. I said he has a puncher's chance. Yeah. yeah, I said if he if he fights Tyson at his game, it's going to be a harder fight. Yeah. But he always has a puncher's chance. He can knock him out. But yeah, I didn't think that it was. Gonna, I thought they. I thought that if he was going to win, he was going to knock him out. Probably yeah, like the the four, same, fourth same round way. because I thought that Tyson would uh, underestimate him. I we got to get out of here, though. No, no, no. I was going to just say, because he was there live. But I think the only way to know what really was going through in Ganyu's mind when he was fighting Tyson is to try to get his coach to come here on the Jackson podcast to talk to his coach. Do you think we could have just, can you just come over here real quick before hey, we sign off? The legend. 20, 2023, 2023 coach of the year, yeah. MMA, Eric, flew in from Extreme Couture. Yeah, right away. And, uh, right away. and uh, we are going to find out in the next episode of the Jackson podcast, why and gone you beat Tyson Fury in a 10 round fight. So yeah. it was good though, that we were talking good. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even see. Yeah, yeah. I kept putting up my, my scope, the Shannon yeah, yeah. Briggs scope, trying to get you guys to laugh so you would look. Uh, I, you know, I didn't know what the hell I you thought it was like. You were the Shannon Briggs scope. You the fuck Shannon Briggs. Hey, hey, fuck look, Shannon look. Briggs. That's what he was doing. I was just trying to get y'all to laugh so then you would look. And then you would see he's there because before yeah. you guys started talking about Ngani, I got scared. We, well, you got nothing bad. I never had nothing bad to say. No, he, yeah. hey, he only, if you're an MMA fighter and you're about to fight a boxer, he takes you no matter what, even if you're the underdog. He's team yeah. MMA yeah. for life. Yeah. No, but you that, saw that's this. A, I had you in my scope. No, we we, we started just talking about, about this because of the president thing. Uh, yeah, right, it was yeah. a lot of con. Bro, yeah. this was the longest ending we've ever had to a podcast. I know. This is, uh, let me hey, get the, whole, uh, the whole yeah. MMA community is going to be like, why does he keep putting his fist up? Yeah, there? yeah. That's like, I was like, the Shannon Brick scope. Yeah, I thought he was doing, I thought Barry was doing some um some so what you call this the um those the superhero those, what you call yeah, yeah, yeah it was after spider-man yeah, 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 yeah. Spider you look like, then I after like, i thought I like know. oh my god her page is like hanging him there yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, I, did, like, I didn't know i was like i kept looking at him I'm like, i almost like oh yeah and i know he <laughs> don't drink the... he don't do no drugs so i didn't know what he was nah, doing. I, don't drink, I, don't drink, I just <laughs> I drink three i thought he was practicing like he i know he'd be fisting his yeah. girls i know i thought he was practicing that he's like a dirty boy right he's a dirty boy the brazilians they want the dirty boys <laughs> All right, guys, we're gonna end it right oh. here, man. It was a great podcast. Thank you, Bushesha. Right? Yeah, yeah, for, Bushesha. Bushesha for sitting you're down almost with confused us. with the other one, but <laughs> 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 almost, that's almost. what he loves. You yeah. see what's on his mind 24 oh, 7. He, Always, he can't even say my name. No, 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 I got the big lips, Bushesha. Yeah, and he uses yeah, those good, for what. Good. Dude, yeah. people made fun of you as a kid because you pussettas. Uh, no, no, not really because, uh, but um, a lot of Americans, they... They get it mixed up. Yeah, they say busse, busse yeah, and busse, they're like, yeah, yeah. so when Brazilian around, like, they start laughing, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 
Hey, we right. have to sign off when we sign off. Okay, okay you just sorry. go right back. These guys can edit. These guys. Can edit. All right, guys, don't edit it. Hey, it was a it was a dope sit down today with Busesha and Bear is the man. Thank you guys for joining hey, us baby. again on Jackson Podcast. We the best, baby. We the best. Yeah.